Hi there, and welcome to this month's Growth Leadership and Management Tip. See, one of the big things inside of a business is to think about your role as a leader. And I like the conversation around something we call change management versus change leadership. A lot of people are really focused around change management, managing the change that's happening to them, as opposed to change leadership, leading themselves in a position of change because they significantly want to see things differently. Now, there's an interesting thing where you start to think a little bit about what your role is as a leader. And in change leadership, what you want to be thinking about is that your number one job is to remove fear from your organization and to build confidence. That's all you need to do. To be a great leader, you need to remove fear from all of the people inside of your organization and you need to build to confidence. So in order to do that, to build to confidence, you need to think about what are the specific skills that we need to be able to train people on to make them a lot better at what they do. And this is where we look at the skill gap analysis. Let's say, for example, you have a look at every single person in your business, and you just say, okay, great, what are these people really good at? In other words, what are their strengths? And then what are their weaknesses? And every single time that you see their weaknesses, you then wanna think about, okay, every single weakness right now is actually a system that we don't have in play. So if we got the system right, then that would change everything in the way that person operates. So let's say, for example, people aren't good at time management. Well, the system that we use for that is just simply diary management. So what we need to do is to go into their diary and teach them how to hard code significantly important appointments, like a start time, a lunch time, and a finish time, and get them to be really clear about prospecting in the morning and maybe, for example, doing appointments in the afternoon. And if you think that that's really important and that changes the way you think, because what I'm always thinking about is how do I actually make my people more confident in what it is that they do? So sometimes when I look at those weaknesses, I think, okay, great, these are now the next things that we need to do. Now, sometimes when I work with leaders, they say, Josh, we go through these one-on-ones with my staff and I have to do it every week and I lose a day. And I'm starting to think, well, then what's the effectiveness of that meeting? And I much prefer the management style is that I only need to meet Um, to either give some praise for someone or I need to meet because I want to see, okay, I'm seeing some issues or some challenges inside of their business and I want to provide them a little bit of guidance to show them on what they can do to fix that to be much, much better at what they do. And this really changes everything where you take people for a walk around the block, you talk about all the great things that they're doing and say, hey, look, are there any challenges that you've got or any things that you perceive as weaknesses right now? And what they perceive as the weakness are the things you now need to go and work on. And that could be what we call your learning development plan. So what are the things I'm now going to teach you to make you even better at what it is that you do? And that might be simple things like how to take an offer, uh, what to do in a multiple offer scenario, um, how to negotiate post-auction, or even something like really basic, like a great open for inspection callback, where you actually convert to booking the appointment or finding out the address of the consumer. Now I'll give you an example of this. Let's say for example, you look at all the people that you meet at open homes. How many of those people live locally and how many of your people actually get the physical address of where those people live? Now this is usually really poorly handled in the real estate industry because we don't have the right question. So a lot of people are like, "Uh, where do you live? And you can understand why consumers are a bit weirded out about that, like why do you wanna know? Because I don't wanna be spammed. Well think about it the other way, what would happen if you created the value first before you asked the question? "Um, You know what I'd love to do for you, Hannah, if it helps, is that if we ever get a significant listing or sale, I'll give you a quick call and let you know. Will that be okay? Now think about that, we put two softeners there. So you know what I'd love to do for you, Hannah, if it helps, um, is that if we get a significant listing or sale, I'll give you a quick call and let you know. Will that be okay? Now who's gonna say no to that? And what you're now starting to understand is there's a really clear methodology here that if we ask the right question, we get the right answer. So how do I build confidence in people? Ultimately, what some managers do is they see someone hasn't made a great call, they go, Hannah, that was the worst call I've ever heard. You need to start thinking more about the customer. And then you kind of walk off and they're like, "Um, I don't know what to do now. And so what you haven't done is build confidence. What you've actually done is to actually build fear. So every day inside of your organization, you're building towards clarity and you're actually pulling people up by giving them confidence around what they do, by building new capabilities and allowing them to really learn through the process. The quicker that you learn, in other words, the more mistakes, the more failures that you get, the quicker that you can get to success because then you're gonna start to really understand what it is that you do. And I often ask people this question, do you actually know what you're doing? And what I mean by that is are you clear about all the things that need to happen in order to be able to get to the right result for the customer? If you can do that inside of your organization, remove fear and build a clarity, you'll have an incredible business. 
I really hope that you've enjoyed this month's growth leadership and management tip. We look forward to seeing you next month.